Coronary stents, those shiny fashion accessories taking over the hearts of Americans. Are they necessary and should you get yourself one? These have become a rite of passage in the United States. You turn 50, you get your coronary stent. If you don't die from a cardiac arrest first, that is. I have some experience there. And then you go ahead and keep on eating your bacon and your butter. Is this a good idea? If your doctor is recommending a coronary stent, should you go ahead and get it done? Well, in this video, we're going to talk all about the science behind coronary stenting and help you make the right decision in your situation. This is Stephen Lone, board certified lifestyle medicine cardiologist. If you want to learn more about lifestyle medicine, chronic disease prevention and reversal and a lot of other cool, fun stuff, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications so you can see all my future videos. Now let's talk coronary stents. Let's go through the science about coronary stents and whether or not they will give you any significant benefit. Then I'm going to leave you with two key pieces of advice to help you to decide whether or not a coronary stent is right in your situation. So here's the deal. The coronary arteries over your lifetime can clog up with cholesterol plaque. It requires two things to clog your arteries, high LDL cholesterol numbers and damage and inflammation to the endothelium, the lining of the coronary arteries. Historically, if a coronary artery gets blocked by 70% or more, we just opened it up. See blockage, fix blockage. Makes a lot of sense, you would think, right? Well, maybe not according to what the clinical research has actually shown. Now, a coronary stent is usually done through the radial artery or the femoral artery in the hospital. And it's a pretty simple, easy procedure, honestly. Very light sedation, very minimal pain or discomfort, and a pretty quick recovery. So it's not that big of a deal, right? Well, there's some potential complication risk that we're going to go through, but still, why do a procedure if it is not necessary? We would think when a coronary artery is blocked more than 70% or so, it's going to put a lot of strain on the heart and really increase the risk of a heart attack and a cardiac arrest, right? Well, maybe not. We would think fixing it, restoring the blood flow, would give a huge clinical benefit, right? Well, maybe not. There were four major clinical trials published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which clearly showed that putting in a coronary stent in stable coronary artery disease does not make you live longer. It doesn't improve survival. Now, we're not talking about coronary stenting in the setting of an acute heart attack, when a plaque in the coronary artery becomes unstable and suddenly clots, 100% cutting off the blood supply in a very short time period. When a heart attack is happening, putting in a coronary stent can be absolutely life-saving. We're talking about coronary stenting in the setting of stable disease. Say somebody's getting shorter breath with exertion, they're getting chest pain with exertion, which we call angina, and maybe a stress test was done, which showed an abnormality, and then the doctor is recommending a coronary angiogram to see if the stress test findings are correct, and then if they do find a blockage, recommending inserting a coronary stent to prop open the artery and restore the blood flow, essentially taking an artery that was severely blocked to one that is no longer blocked. The Barry 2D trial, the FAME 2 trial, the COURAGE trial, and the ischemia trial had thousands of patients randomized to coronary stenting versus medical therapy and clearly showed that putting in coronary stents in stable coronary blockages did not prevent heart attacks or make you live longer. This graph from the ischemia trial shows that an invasive strategy putting in a coronary stent versus a conservative strategy using medications and lifestyle had no difference in death overall, no matter which group you looked at. So there was no benefit in getting the coronary stent in regards to survival. The researchers concluded that there was no evidence that an initial invasive strategy putting in a coronary stent as compared to a conservative strategy using medications and lifestyle reduced the risk of having a cardiovascular event or dying from any cause and they followed these patients for 3.2 years. Now don't blame the doctors for this. Look at this coronary angiogram. Here is a severe blockage in the top part of the left anterior descending, the widowmaker very severely blocked. And you look at this and you think, oh my gosh, this person's going to have a big heart attack. It's going to jeopardize a lot of the heart muscle. And this could be fatal. I mean, that's why they call it the Widowmaker, right? It just makes a lot of common sense. Open it up. Restore the blood flow. This is going to help the patient, isn't it? 
Well, no, the ischemia trial actually included patients that had blockages like this. And again, randomized to a coronary stent versus conservative therapy, and really there was no difference in death from any cause. So even a big blockage like this, we don't necessarily have to fix with a coronary stent. Experts have said that we need to avoid the therapeutic illusion that we're actually accomplishing more than what we are. It looks like we did a good job opening up that blockage, but did it really help the patient? Maybe not. And again, please don't blame the doctors and the medical community. You see a severe blockage jeopardizing a lot of the heart muscle. You would think it would make common sense to open up the blockage and restore the blood flow. The patient should do better, right? But until you actually go and put it to the test in a randomized controlled trial like the ischemia trial, you never really know. And the research shows we don't have to put in stents in those stable blockages. You know, it's kind of similar when people used to think that the earth was flat. A lot of scientists thought that, but until they went out and checked and figured out, wow, we didn't fall off the edge of the earth, then they finally realized, no, the earth is round. Although I hear some people still think the earth is flat. Hmm, kind of crazy. The reason that coronary stents, when put in stable blockages, do not make you live longer and improve outcomes is because they're not treating the underlying cause of the problem. Say you put in a stent in that severe blockage that we looked at. Okay, great, it looks fine. But what if you have a heart attack here, 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 or here, any other place you could technically have a heart attack. That stent is only fixing a very small portion of the vessel and a vast majority of heart attacks happen from relatively minor blockages that suddenly become unstable and clot. And we don't have a great way to identify those vulnerable areas of plaque in the coronary arteries that are about to rupture and cause a heart attack. So fixing one blockage is great, but guess what? You can progress your disease and have heart attacks in many other areas of your coronary arteries. Fixing that one spot isn't gonna solve all your problems, you need to treat the underlying cause of heart disease, which is diet and lifestyle, right? We really need to be using a lifestyle medicine approach to treating coronary artery disease. Every year in the United States, about 1 million coronary stents are inserted into stable blockages. And with a mortality rate of just under 1%, that means somewhere around 10,000 people die every year from complications of coronary stenting. And a very similar number have a heart attack during the procedure. When you use a lifestyle medicine approach, there's no deaths, there's no heart attacks, there's no strokes, and it can be very effective nearly 100% if you go all in with intensive changes for your cardiovascular health. Of course, the more dramatic changes you make to your diet and your lifestyle, the better you're gonna end up being. But any change towards a healthier diet and lifestyle is gonna give you significant benefit. Now, it's not just death and heart attack that are potential complications of coronary artery stenting. About one in 250 risk of having a stroke during the procedure. You can have a bleeding complication from the artery that they go in. The contrast that they have to use can cause damage to the kidneys. And after you get a coronary stent, you need to be put on blood thinner so that coronary stent doesn't clot and that has a risk of bleeding in itself. And there's also some sedation that's given. There's some risk of having complications related to sedation we need to carefully weigh the risks of a coronary stent procedure versus the benefit. And we know the benefit is not to make you live longer or prevent heart attacks based on all the clinical trials. This is why the guidelines in the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology give only a class 2B recommendation to putting in a coronary stent in a stable blockage in the proximal LAD, the top part of the Widowmaker. The usefulness of coronary revascularization to improve survival is uncertain, they say, and they give a class three indication, don't do it to doing coronary stenting in one or two vessel coronary artery disease that doesn't involve the proximal LAD in order to improve survival. Saying straight out, it's not gonna make you live longer if you get a coronary stent in stable disease. Now again, can you make yourself 100% heart attack proof with a lifestyle medicine approach? Well, maybe not quite 100%, but you can get close depending on how far in you go. Check out my video on lifestyle medicine and heart disease for more details. Make sure you know the six pillars of lifestyle medicine in order to prevent and reverse heart disease. Okay, here are my two pieces of advice that I'd like to give you in case you're faced in the situation where you need to decide whether or not a coronary stent is right for you. First of all, find a lifestyle medicine focused physician, hopefully a cardiologist. 
look at plantbaseddocs.org. I will have a link in the description below. Find one in your area and make sure you get that second opinion so that you can have a good evidence-based approach to making this very important, potentially life-changing decision for yourself. Now say you can't find a lifestyle medicine cardiologist, but you do trust the cardiologist that you've been working with. At least do this second piece of advice. Use a shared decision-making tool directly with your cardiologist to make sure you understand everything about the risks and benefits and alternatives of getting a coronary stent placed. Here is a good example of what a shared decision-making tool looks like. I'll have a link in the description below to some that you could use with your cardiologist. You need to make sure that you have a role in the decision-making process and that you understand the clinical question, should you get a coronary stent? Here's a good test for you and your cardiologist. Ask the cardiologist the question, will this procedure potentially make me live longer? If they say yes, hmm, I'm not sure, maybe you should get a second opinion. Make sure you ask your cardiologist about alternatives and see what they say about using medications and a lifestyle medicine approach. Ask about the pros and cons of getting the coronary stent placed. Ask about uncertainties of the procedure. Make sure you understand it and then make sure that they take into account your personal preference. Some people say, doc, I don't mind getting a procedure. Bring it on. Let's do it. Other people say, a procedure in the hospital? No way. I'd like to avoid that if at all possible. Now, every situation is different. Of course, make sure you talk to your cardiologist about what's right in your specific situation, but use that decision-making tool so you have a better understanding as to whether or not you should get a coronary stent. Try your best to find a lifestyle medicine cardiologist. Please, don't just get a stent put in and go back to eating bacon and butter. Check out my video about eating bacon and about saturated fat to learn more about why you shouldn't do that. Now, as a lifestyle medicine cardiologist, of course, my preference is to take a lifestyle medicine approach to coronary disease, regular physical activity, and eating a plant-based diet. We can reverse heart disease if you go all in, change your diet, and do the right things. Well, I hope you liked this video about coronary artery stenting and you have a better idea as to whether or not a coronary stent is right in your situation. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications, Check out my other videos on heart disease prevention and reversal. Stay healthy. See you next time.